The top selling category of supplements by far are fat burning supplements. These are supplements that promise to help you get leaner. Here's the problem. Most of them do nothing. Now there are some that actually help a little bit. That's what we're going to talk about today in today's episode, the top four fat burning supplements you can take. Is that true? Is the fat burning supplements the highest? It's it's the hmm. most, is it's it, definitely one of the, the highest margins. Do you, include, do you include pre-workout in that? Because pre-workout is the highest. For margins? Oh, I think margins. No, and, I think fat burning is and, the margin. and sold. That's a good question. Yeah. What's the most popular? It was like hydroxy cut back in the day. Back was the like day a was. big yeah name for that uh, category. But like I, I haven't heard of any uh, body uh, fat burners out there that are. It's like still popular. a huge category. It is a big category. It's a huge yeah. category. But I, I what so what I don't know is if you include uh, pre workout in that. It's got to be it beats yeah. pre workout. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% Oh, you positive. think it beats pre-workout? Yeah. I don't think wow. it does. I yeah, think almost 100%. I think, I think pre, the last time I saw an article, I thought I saw that pre I know pre-workout was one like, of the fastest growing. It didn't exist, you know, Yeah, no, that's, that's why I think that's interesting is because that yeah. was like when we were trainers <clears throat> early in our career, uh, pre-workout wasn't just barely becoming yeah. a thing um, where it's now like it's... I, it, it's Doug, maybe you can look up a fat-burning supplement. Uh, look at the market share. Just to see. Um, Nonetheless, regardless of what Doug gets, it is one of the most marketable supplements. Fat loss. Oh, yeah. because, I mean, shoot. we uh, It provides the promise. When right? we do yeah. these episodes, right? When we do single topic episodes, we, we hired uh, a guy, Jeremy, who helps with titling and topics and stuff like that. And n never fails. Always. The m number one thing everybody wants to hear is fat loss. Top fat fat loss. That, every time. Yeah, anything around losing fat, losing fat. It's and the so number one goal. It's the biggest challenge. And also, look, <clears throat> as trainers, when you train people, if you had, if, a, if, it, if the average person or typical client came up to you and asked you a question about a supplement, nine out of 10 times, it was a, it was a supplement that promised to lose body fat. Mm -hmm. Almost always, right? It was always like, yep. hey, I heard about this supplement. It helps lose fat. This supplement... So it's definitely a big category, and it's one that we get questions uh, from all the time. And so I wanted to break down like ones that actually help. But before we do, we got to explain the fat loss process because otherwise this won't make sense. That's so right. first off, fat loss can only occur. It can only occur if there's an energy imbalance, okay? So you have to, your body has to burn more calories than you take in, or you have to expend more energy then you consume. When this happens, you have what's called an energy imbalance. So if I'm burning 2,000 calories worth of energy, but I'm taking in 1,000 calories worth of energy, to make up the difference, my body will have to tap into stored energy, which is hopefully body fat, right? Hopefully that's what I'm burning. I'm not burning other things. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way it can happen. If you are not, if you don't have this energy imbalance, fat loss will not occur. If I am eating more calories or consuming more energy than I'm burning, my body has, there is, there's, it's, uh, it's against the law of physics. It cannot burn my stored energy because now I have excess energy that I consume, which is only going to get stored back on my body. So that's in a nutshell how it works. Now this is an oversimplification because it's obviously more complex than just doing that, right? If it was as easy as eat less, uh, and move more, then we wouldn't be in an obesity epidemic. Uh, the metabolism is uh, very adaptable. It doesn't stay in one place. This is it causes problems for people. Also, the kinds of foods you eat can influence the amount of calories that you burn. The type of activity you do can influence your metabolism as well. And then, of course, activity itself burns calories. Um, and then what you eat determines how you feel and et cetera, et cetera. So it's far more complex than what I just said. But what I just said is also true Without that energy imbalance, fat loss uh, won't happen. Well, the reason why that's so important to make that clear is because all of these fat loss supplements always have this interesting way of marketing themselves where they never bring that part up. <clears throat> yeah. It's always, uh, this is insulin uh, blocking and this does, right. this This converts carbohydrates into, you know, they they always have some spin. And they have awesome this, animations to kind of show you how yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the particles like all of a sudden come out of the capsule and then they evaporate the fat. Yeah, this, <laughs> this targets specifically the fat around the liver then transports it in the bloodstream so you can use it off as energy and so they have all these like <laughs> cool things to uh, tell you that this supplement aids and does when it, it none of it matters if you're eating in a calorie surplus if That's you're right. in a calorie surplus 
Uh, I don't care all the fancy stuff that they claim a supplement or a pill can do in your body. You will gain. You will gain weight. You will not lose weight. Uh, you will not be if you're in a surplus. So that's where it doesn't even matter. And so then, if you understand that, then you there are other approaches that make more sense when it comes to investing in some sort of supplements. If my pursuit is fat loss, which I think is the the point of this conversation. Yes. Yeah, so so mm -hmm. then you want to look at supplements from that standpoint. Okay, it, it, what part of the formula will this supplement help? The burning part or the consumption part? By the way, I like that you said weight. Uh, Adam, because if you eat more calories than you burn, that that you will gain weight. You could gain muscle, right? You could also gain body fat. The whole point is that excess energy doesn't just evaporate uh, in out of existence. Uh, it needs to be converted to something else. This is a law of, of physics where energy cannot be created uh, nor destroyed. Uh, you don't get energy out of nothing. Um, and, and energy doesn't just turn into nothing. It, it gets converted. Sometimes it gets converted to heat or it gets converted to uh, fuel, or it gets converted to body fat or muscle or something like that. But nonetheless, if there's a calorie surplus or excess energy, it has to go somewhere on your body. Uh, and if there's a calorie deficit, then your body will tap into its own stored energy. And that's where you get the weight loss. And of course, what we're looking for is fat loss, not just weight loss. Uh, right. And if we're looking at weight gain, it's muscle gain, right? right? Not fat gain. So supplements for fat burning are typically broken down into three categories. There are the ones that are called fat burners that promise to burn more calories. Mm -hmm. Typically, these are marketed as supplements that somehow trigger an effect in the body to getting your metabolism to just on its own burn more calories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Some thermogenic effect, right? Yes, they'll, they'll often refer to it as like a thermogenic effect, right? So if I take this pill, then and here's what thermogenic means: if I take this pill, more of the energy I'm consuming will get converted into heat. So mm -hmm. I'm going to actually burn more calories because I've somehow told my body you need to produce more heat. So thermo meaning heat, right? Thermogenic. This is a heat producing compound. It's going to get me to burn more calories. Um, uh, sometimes you'll hear of a supplement. Uh, I remember back in the day, pyruvate was one yeah. that in, it, it, it caused energy, the energy metabolic system or the energy system to create energy waste, which also would come out in, 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 uh, in terms of heat. And they said, okay, this gets you to burn more calories, but nonetheless, it's, these are, these are supplements that promise to somehow speed up the metabolism. Yeah. Then you have the fat loss supplements that are more of your appetite suppressants. These are supplements or compounds that make you eat less. And that's a very straightforward way of getting you to lose weight. I would say in the short term, this category of fat loss supplements have been the most successful. These are the ones that people have taken and have seen weight loss and then they get really popular. You mentioned one of them, HydroxyCut. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, uh, and, and you can't really buy this supplement stack anymore, not, at least not in this way. You could, you could piece it together yourself uh, if you go to a pharmacy, but Back in the day, a really popular supplement combination was known as the ECA stack, right? Ephedra, caffeine, aspirin. Aspirin. Ephedra and caffeine being very strong central nervous system stimulants. Ephedra and caffeine working synergistically. Aspirin uh, helped elongate or prolong the half life, so made it look work longer. And you would take those together, you get the stimulant effect. The side effect being, I don't want to eat as much food. When that supplement came out, or those types of supplements came out, there was a Xenadrin, there was HydroxyCut, there was Rip Fuel. Uh, in a short-term period, typically 30 days, 60 days, people would take them three times a day. That's what you used to have to do. It was a lot of uh, ephedra. I remember it was like 25 milligrams each, each yeah. dose. And people lost weight. But the reason why they lost weight is they just ate less food. Those are appetite suppressant. Hey, this episode is brought to you by the world's best probiotic seed. Everybody else sucks. You want the benefits of probiotics? Go with seed. Click on this link right here to get started. Uh, you just said something. I'm over, I'm over here smiling because uh, you just triggered something that I haven't thought about in such a long time. Do you remember the sales pitch for pyruvate? I, uh, <laughs> I do. Is it the Krebs cycle? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I can give it to you. I yeah, still I still remember. Yeah, okay. So, so what pyruvate is, it's part of the Krebs cycle. What is the Krebs cycle? The Krebs cycle is your body starting to burn and metabolize fat. 
And it takes the average person six to 16 minutes to get into this cycle. And what tells the body that it's in the cycle to start burning fat is pyruvate. Pyruvate is released from the brain, tells the body then to switch over and start to metabolize fat as its primary source of fuel. So when you take the supplement pyruvate, and let's say on average, it takes you 10 minutes to get into this Krebs cycle and pyruvate to get released, it gets released faster. So now you get an additional <laughs> five to 10 minutes of burning fat every time you're doing cardio That's exercise. Sell it. Oh wow. yeah, yeah, I remember. I'll take yeah. two bottles. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's good. That's right. Uh, it's been so long since I even thought about that, yes. but I remember. And then you have uh, categories of supplements that aid the fat metabolizing process. You probably, pyruvate actually might actually fit better in that category. There's other ones like L-carnitine, right? An amino acid that uh, is important for fat uh, metabolism. Uh, choline sometimes was sold, was sold as, this way, as this, right? These are supplements that, you know, when you look at how your body breaks down fat and turns it into energy, there are certain compounds that are used and nutrients that are used for that process. So the theory was, well, if I take those, I'm going to encourage or enhance the fat, you know, metabolizing effect of the body. So those are the three main categories of supplements. And I'm going to tell you right now that most supplements in those categories are not going to work very well at all. Fat loss supplements are, uh, maybe they might be one of the most popular, but they're also the, one of the worst in terms of actually producing like when you look at the data, when you look at studies actually producing effective and sustainable results, they just fail uh, almost across the board. I, I want to address the the probably the percentage of people that are, you know, screaming at their, their radio right now going, oh, no, I saw all kinds of great results when I did this thing, because there there's two there's two main <clears throat> reasons why any fat burning supplements worked for somebody and there's the two main ones there's a lot of the the fancy uh the sales pitches that they tell you it's doing and what's so magical about it but they either one suppress the appetite so it helps people control their cravings and binge eating that's right or they affect the central nervous system and they make you all jittery and want to move like crazy and so all, more. Yeah. so all day it's like you're on cocaine and so you burn a bunch of extra calories because you're moving your fingers and tapping your feet and you're doing yeah. a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't have been done those are the two most effective ways that all these products and that's why most all of them have something in it that suppresses the appetite or has some sort of you know stimulant in it to keep you to move all day long or you naturally just adjust your eating behaviors as a result of like being disciplined and taking a pill. And sure. Then also, it, it has a downstream know, effect. Has a downstream yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. There, I yeah. mean, that's a that's across the board on all supplements. They say is the placebo yeah. effect, the, right? Just the fact that you are taking a supplement, you tend to make other choices or better choices and stuff like yeah. that. But the number one and number two is that is appetite it, suppressant and then uh, making you move more. Now right? I'm gonna like, now now let's look at that, right? So moving more does help. It's healthier for you to move more. It does help with calorie burning. But the body does adapt uh, quickly to that. Like if I just do a lot of movement, my body starts to learn how to burn less calories doing so. And, and if I keep doing that, I can actually pair muscle down uh, through that process. We know this. We've seen studies on this. It's not really – moving more is not really an effective way of trying to burn or, or lose body fat. It's, it's, not, it's good for your health. When it comes to weight loss or fat loss, it's not really a sustainable um, approach. And then as far as appetite suppression is concerned – at least when it comes to these CNS uh, stimulant-based supplements, um, the body also adapts very quickly. You get this, mm -hmm. this down-regulation of receptors where it did suppress your appetite at first, but then after 30 days or 45 days or so, it's not doing it anymore. And then when you go off, uh, you get a rebound effect. Yeah. Um, and this is why people who lost weight on ephedra back in the day gained it back. Yeah. They might have lost it, but then they all, then they all uh, gained it back. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about supplements that will actually help and will actually help in the long term. So we're going to start with a supplement that is not normally traditionally. In fact, there's a few supplements on this list that are not traditionally uh, classified as fat loss supplements. But we're going to make the case uh, as to why these are, uh, in fact, some of the most effective fat loss supplements. I like this. So the first one I'm going to start with is protein powder. So you might be thinking, how is protein what? powder going to help me lose weight? It's adding calories. I'm eating protein. Well, two, here's why. Two big ways. Yeah, here's why. Uh, two reasons. One, a high protein diet, even in a calorie controlled environment. So if I have two groups of people eating the same calories, but one group is eating high protein, the other group is eating your typical low protein diet, the high protein diet tends to cause more fat loss. And here's the important part, more muscle gain. 
high protein diets contribute to muscle gain, especially when compared when combined with strength training, and muscle speeds up the metabolism. So if I can speed up the metabolism through building muscle, which protein mm -hmm. definitely helps with, we are now setting ourselves up for sustainable fat loss. It's also a great alternative when people are at a, in a jam or a pickle of, I didn't make a meal, I don't have a great choice in front of me. So having a shake in replace of uh -oh. some processed, well, it's processed food, but a fast food in a wrapper, you know, macro, uh, not macro friendly type of meal. You've got this meal that is high in protein, which most people under consuming that. So the, the benefit of the, you're getting something, something satiety producing. In addition to that, you're contributing to building muscle, which in turn speeds the metabolism up. This was like a, almost every client I ever had, because we struggle with hitting protein, this supplement became a, a staple that everybody had for that exact reason. Or even this, yeah, the muscle sparing effect when you're in a deficit, you know, making sure your protein levels are, you know, adequate enough so that way you're, you know, you, you don't lose muscle. Most effective thing you could do for fat loss for yourself uh, is speed up your metabolism. It makes it a lot easier. And so your strength training, which does that, you, if to make it as effective as possible, you want to eat high protein. High protein in this context is about a gram of protein per pound of target body weight. So if your target body weight is 140 pounds, well, you need to eat 140 grams of protein every single day. And that's hard for a lot of people. Sometimes it's more, right? If you're a, if you're a man, 180 grams or 200 grams, that's hard to do uh, on a day in and day out basis. And protein powders can help, right? So if you're a man trying to hit 200 grams and you're hitting around 130, 150 every day from Whole Foods, well, you throw in a mm -hmm. 50 gram shake. Now you've hit that protein target. You're going to build a lot more muscle, thus improving or increasing your metabolic rate. Now fat loss becomes much more sustainable and achievable. So this is why protein powder, uh, in, in, in my opinion, is a good, you know, quote unquote, fat loss uh, supplement. Next is caffeine. Now, caffeine is the, one of the most classic stimulants. Caffeine, I'm, now I'm not putting it in there because it speeds up the metabolism or all that stuff. You know, that's not why I'm putting it in there. I'm putting it in there primarily because uh, caffeine, especially if you don't use it all the time, when you do use it, it does boost motivation. Yeah. And that helps make you want to move or work you out. You just naturally move a bit more. That's right. And so caffeine, this is, I mean, you, you talked about pre-workouts at the beginning of the podcast. That's the main reason why pre-workouts are popular. It's the only reason. Yeah. It's the main, yeah. it's the thing, it's of all the stuff they sell you on that's in it to do whatever they say, the most effective thing and the reason why they all have caffeine and the ones you probably like the most have the highest amount of caffeine <laughs> is because it's the caffeine that you feel. It's the thing that gets you stimulated. It gets you going in your workout. It gets you sweating within five minutes instead of waiting 30 minutes to get to break that first sweat. It's the thing that motivates you to move around throughout the day. It's the thing that wakes you up first thing in the morning and makes you do more productive things before. Like That's why that's so effective. And, the, and all the studies that are on caffeine as far uh, as the benefits outweighing any sort of the detriments. This is why this becomes a go-to supplement. But the thing that I, the, the caveat to that is that I would be, I would, you, your body will adapt to that. And so you can get into here's, this rat race of yes, just increasing And it. here's the way to use caffeine for fat loss. Save it for before your workouts. If you're listening to this right now and you struggle with weight loss um, and you're not a regular caffeine drinker, if you are, start to take, start to taper yourself off first and then save the caffeine for workouts. It's a treat and it'll motivate you. So it helps get you to the gym. It helps get you through your workout. It'll help you be more consistent. It's something to look forward to. This is how I would use it with my clients is, is, is for the ones who didn't drink regular caffeine and who struggle, I'd say, okay, let's have, if they never had caffeine, it would be 50 milligrams or hundred milligrams at the most. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, here, have a little caffeine 30 minutes before you're supposed to go do your walk or supposed to go do your workout. And it helped. It helped them with consistency. So really, the caffeine is there to help with motivation to keep you consistent. And that's why I think it's a... But, and it's also, by the way, in almost every fat loss supplement, precisely because it does make you feel yeah, good. Yeah, you, you do uh, feel it. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. Next is uh, an, an adaptogen known as ashwagandha. Now, ashwagandha, it doesn't have this direct 
fat loss effect, although some studies show that it might help a little bit. It doesn't have this direct muscle building effect, although there are some studies that show that it helps somewhat with it. More so, ashwagandha helps the body deal with stress or it helps you to not be overcome or your body become overcome with stress. Now, why is this important for this category? Well, if you're trying to, you have to lose recover. body fat, you're putting yourself in a calorie deficit, you're working out, those are both stresses. They're both stresses on the body. And if your body's ability to adapt to that stress is enhanced a little bit, it's going to make the process uh, a little bit more effective. And among all of the adaptogenic herbs that are out there, there's a lot of them, right? There's rhodiola, there's ginseng, uh, cordyceps might even be in there. Uh, but ashwagandha has the most studies supporting it and is probably the, the, the best tolerated for people. Some uh, adaptogenics can cause like stimulant, stimulant effects. Some people don't like certain ones, but it's pretty rare uh, a person take ashwagandha and not necessarily, not really like how it feels. Most people like that. It's kind of relaxing. It feels good. And it does. It helps the body adapt to stress. And because again, you're going to be adding stress to your, your body through a calorie deficit, if you're trying to lose weight and extra exercise, ashwagandha, what ashwagandha is, will help. Mm -hmm. What is it? What does the research say as far as it, it, does it support you switching over to parasympathetic? Does it, does, does it help switch over yes. at a faster mm -hmm. rate? Yes. Which I think that's important to note. That's one of the things, I mean, your ability to be it's able to- It's known as an enzyolytic. Right, your ability to switch over to rest and recovery is as important uh, yeah. to you being able to get up and work out and do your things because you get up, you go work out and you move and you stimulate muscle. Well, that's important. That's part of the process. The other part of the process is being able to relax, calm down, rest, recover, repair. And that supplement helps you- help you helps you do that so yeah that's an adaptation skill you train like the best athletes in the world are their ability to uh recover and to be able to adapt to that stress and then come back and then perform again um you know that's what sets them apart from other athletes yeah now last is uh definitely a supplement that people don't talk about for fat loss but in my opinion is one of the best and that's creatine creatine if you're eating a high protein diet right you got that staple down um, creatine is a phenomenal strength and muscle building supplement and will directly lead to a faster metabolism as a result of that. So if you want to get your body to burn more calories on its own, you want to build more muscle, creatine is the king of all supplements in this category. It will help you build muscle. It does also hyperhydrate your muscles. It also hyperhydrates your skin. It produces this nice fullness to your muscles, tightness, feels more sculpted, more toned because of the, the increased mm -hmm. fluid, but it helps the muscle building process. And when you build muscle, you become a better fat burning machine, period, end of story. We've said this many times on the podcast, if you want to burn body fat, this is why strength training is the best form of exercise mm -hmm. for fat loss. It's through the metabolism boosting effects. It's not because you're burning tons of calories, uh, just through the activity. Creatine helps with muscle building. So that supplement for fat loss is uh, one of the best. Yeah, and improving your performance as you're doing your workout, you're going to squeeze that uh, last bit of potential uh, out of that uh, signal to, to really kind of place you in that anabolic uh, high signal state where you're going to build muscle. I was going to make that point that I think that that's the other part of this is that when you talk all the time about the importance of when okay. we're helping someone build their metabolism to chase strength and yeah. to get strength stronger. We've also talked about when you take creatine, it's normally a pretty clear five to 10 more pounds on most of your lifts. So within two weeks. Yeah. So yeah. when you are trying to chase strength, to chase building muscle, um, and especially when you're doing that in the context of I'm trying to speed my metabolism up, that's the main purpose of me building this muscle. Even if your overall goal is I want to lose 50 pounds, Adam, that's what I'm trying to do. It, us trying to build your muscle, uh, build muscle and build your metabolism is going to aid in that. And so this is why this is such a great strategy. Why that's such a great supplement is your ability to be able to add five or 10 more pounds to the bar is only going to naturally progressively overload you in your workouts, which then stimulates more muscle growth. And then if you feed it properly with all the other things, then you speed your metabolism up. hundred percent. It's also a longevity supplement. It's good for your brain. It's good for your body. It's good for your organs. Uh, it's a, it's a great all around supplement. But definitely, make no mistake, it is a fat-burning supplement because of its ability to help you build muscle. We've got some questions here. The first one is, can supplements really make a difference for fat loss? Not a big difference. You know, uh, you and that's just that. being 100%. Yeah. Like 100%, like we're listing the best supplements we think for fat loss because that's the category. Yeah. 
but still a small sliver. It's it's a it's complementing all the big rocks. Yeah, like if you look, if I put diet, training, sleep, and lifestyle in a pie chart with supplements, supplements would be like one percent. I mean, uh, unless you're making up a nutrient deficiency. They really don't make a huge difference. Uh, e- even the crazy black market illegal stuff that's out there <laughs> that bodybuilders will take doesn't make that huge of a difference. It's it's the it's the diet, it's the training, it's the you know getting good sleep. It's those things. I, I've always approached it with clients in in regards to uh, like how I recommend supplements based off their disposable income. And that is like if I have a client who has lots of disposable income and they're like, yeah, why not take these extra things that give us an extra three to five percent on all the things we're trying to do? But if I have somebody who's just like financially they're tight or they don't have that kind of disposable income and I haven't checked all the boxes with them, like we're not dialed on their sleep. We're not dialed on their nutrition. We're not dialed on their consistency around their programming. I'm not even putting that much energy in this direction. It really has to do with where they're where they're at financially and like how much of that effort is being put towards the things that don't cost them any more money that they can improve on. And if they really want to move the needle, selling them a $50 bottle of X thing is not going to move the needle. What's going to move the needle are the big rocks. Now, say you've checked all those boxes then yeah, this is this is going to add- That's some, the next thing. Yeah, this is the next thing to do that. But there normally is plenty of room for me to help people first uh, in the big rocks before you know defaulting over to like supplements as a as main source for results. Can a multivitamin help with fat loss? It can if you have a nutrient deficiency. Yeah, deficiencies. Yeah, if you're deficient in a vitamin, an essential vitamin or mineral- your Especially body's like vitamin D, magnesium. Y- yeah, your body's uh, functions are not; uh, it, it can't function properly. Um, so you can cause lots of problems. Like a vitamin D deficiency can cause depression, pain, hormone imbalances, magnesium deficiency, anxiety, bone loss, uh, muscle contraction issues. Um, so if you're lacking in a, in a nutrient, and then you take a vitamin and get that nutrient filled, huge difference. Huge difference. Like going from nutrient deficiency to nutrients filled you'll feel like a completely different person. Nutrient deficiencies can feel like illness. So it definitely can help. Now, if you're if you not, if you don't have a deficiency, it won't make a difference. So I'm, I'm glad we got this mm-hmm. question because that's where this list changes, right? Yeah. Obviously, we made a, a generic list for the general population on what we think are the four best fat loss supplements outside of your traditional fat loss supplements, right? But what trumps all supplements are when you have a client that, and this is why I suggest, especially if trainers that are listening, that your cl- your clients go and get blood panels, especially as they age, so I can get a good look and see like if they are deficient in anything, because somebody deficient in iron, in magnesium, in vitamin D, which are all very common to have deficiency, and you're talking about like 50% plus of the population are deficient in some of those things, them supplementing for that now becomes a great fat loss supplement. Mm-hmm. Not because it has anything to do with metabolizing fat or a thermogenic effect, is that your body systems are running more efficiently when your body is getting what it's supposed they to get. They were broken systems before. That's right. And so you fixing that first, it now becomes the best fat loss supplement that you could possibly take because you're making your machinery run smoother and better by giving it what it needs. So that's the the, the difference in this list is it changes per the individual if that individual knows where they lack in certain supplements. It's early access to Black Friday, all MAPS programs, all bundles, 60% off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get 10 entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right. Back to the show. Next question. How low should I bring my calories for fat loss? So for fat loss, you want to bring your calories below what you're burning. And usually it's anywhere between five to 700 calories below uh, what's known as maintenance. Now it can be more or less depending on the person. So I'm giving a kind of a general uh, answer, but let's say you've realized or figured out, you've tracked your food for a couple of weeks and you realize, okay, I'm averaging about 2,500 calories a day. Um, and I want to lose weight. Well, if you go down to 2000 or 1800, now you're in a deficit, you'll see some fat loss. 
Um, I don't like bringing people's calories below 1,500, uh, period, end of story. Um, uh, it definitely not below 1,200. Uh, then things get kind of iffy, you plateau real hard, um, and people don't feel very good. I agree. I would add this also because this is a, a, a challenge that I'm going through personally with right now with, with my diet is I'm heading into a cut right now, and I'm not – up to where I would like to be metabolically before I do a cut. So in the past, um, I would get up to 4,000 plus calories to maintain my body. And then I would go to a cut and then I could, I could comfortably cut a thousand calories and eat 3000 calories and lean out. I'm not there right now. I'm at a place right now where my maintenance is probably somewhere around 3,200 calories or so. And so in order for me to cut right now, I think all the way down to 2,500. Well, here's the challenge with that is when I start getting around 2,500 or less calories, it becomes really difficult for me to consistently hit my protein intake. Mm. So that becomes really important. Like, so if you, let's say you want to cut 500 or 1,000 calories, well, if you can do that, if you can cut 1,000 calories from your diet and still fit in enough protein that your body needs to sustain the muscle mass that you want on your body, then I would say it's probably not a bad, the reason why cutting below 1500 is that's what happens. You cut somebody below 1500 calories, it's hard for them to get what their body needs nutritionally, especially something as important as protein. So that becomes the most important factor on how many calories I cut is, can I get a client's uh, metabolism up fast enough that when I reduce by 500, 700, or 1,000 calories, that place that I reduce to, can they still hit the important macronutrients that I want them to hit, like their daily prote protein intake? And if that puts them in a place where all they could have is tilapia and spinach <laughs> all day long in order to do that, that's way too low for me. I want them to be able to have good, healthy, balanced meals that aren't starving like them with like tilapia boiled that they can sustain because that's not sustainable so i want to make sure that the cut is somewhere you also that need essential nutrients in there too like right. fats and, and vitamins and minerals that's right so I, I want to be able to build the, the metabolism up to a place and i think when you're in a very healthy place metabolically you can get away with larger deficits in, in calories it's where it gets where it gets dangerous is when you cut a large deficit and that deficit takes you in a place that's so low your body's lacking in all these mm. ma macro and micronutrients is it true that my sleep plays a role in fat loss? Oh, huge, yeah. Yeah. huge role. Huge role. Yeah, I, I, there's really interesting studies on this where they'll they'll control people's calories, and they'll have a group essentially have bad sleep, and another group have good sleep, mm -hmm. and they'll put them both in a deficit, and the bad sleep group will lose twice as much muscle and half as much body fat. So the body yeah. is really learning to slow down its metabolism. Uh, sleep also affects your cravings, your behavior, your mood. Um, has a very powerful effect on cravings. Very, very yeah. powerful effect on on how you eat. Um, and, and, if, and then, of course, it's just your health gets affected negatively. Like, yeah, your hormones are all out of whack. Oh. Like, it's just, it, it, it's so much of the building process of even building muscle or like retaining muscle. Like, all that is dependent on like how much rest recovery you get. Well, yeah, we, we obviously, if you listen to the podcast, you hear us at Nauseam talk about the importance of strength training and building muscle and building your metabolism. None of that works without rest and recovery. The, the, the magic in all of that, it, we can have the best programming in the world. You can be following a maps and dieting perfect and you get shit sleep and all that goes out the window yeah. because the, the, the real work or the real the magic that happens from all the working out happens when you rest, recover and adapt from that. If that part is disrupted and consistently disrupted, you could have great well, workouts, great diet, and you're going to have shitty results. That's how powerful the sleep are. And it's, Sal, you, say, you share a story all the time with the client that you had where all you did was get adjust. better sleep. Yeah. Get better sleep. And also you reduced, I believe, I think the story goes, you reduced her training, how much yep. she was training and focused on getting sleep. Yep. And all of a sudden the weight started coming, changed yep. nothing else. No, her, her yeah. body, her body just, because she started to build more muscle, metabolism got affected positively, hormones balanced out and she got leaner. I mean, you, you're trying to get leaner with crappy sleep is a recipe for muscle loss. It's yeah. a recipe for flabbiness. It's a recipe for terrible hormone uh, profile. No, no, no. You have, you, it, it, and this is true for any adaptation you're looking for to any kind of stress, building muscle, improving endurance, getting stronger, or burning body fat. You got to prioritize sleep. Otherwise, you're going to make this almost impossible. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So, in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six-pack. 
Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body